man, okay, so you're kind of going to have to do my job for me here because I honestly don't really think I have anything to say when it comes to this game. The Vancouver Canucks have lost yet another one. This time it is a 3-1 to decision to the St. Louis Blues in a game where there was a whole bunch of preceding goaltending drama in terms of protocols, guys getting out, Halak is gone, Demko's gone, Spencer Martin from the other night is gone, Artur Silovs is also gone too, who probably would have been playing ahead of DiPietro had he actually been healthy, but alas, he was not. So DiPietro is in tonight, and oh man, this is why I say that you're going to have to do my job for me, because I don't really have too many thoughts on this game that extend beyond three or four sentences. It's kind of a Quentin Tarantino thing here, starting from the end working backwards, but DiPietro needed to be a lot better. The Canucks needed to push more when they couldn't get things to go towards the end of the game, and earlier on in the game, they just could not buy a goal by Huso. And I apologize if anybody is expecting a good video from me. I don't really make good videos, to be honest. I just kind of make videos that are kind of just true to who I am as a person, and I don't know what it is about this game or this night in particular. Maybe it's the game itself, maybe it's my disposition from other external factors, but I'm just not feeling it. I kind of tuned out of this game partway through the second period after the, what was it, the second St. Louis Blues goal went in when the Blues had two goals on three shots in the second period, two goals and four shots by the end of the period, and DiPietro had that really bad Kairu shot that went off his blocker and in to make it, what was it, 3-1? to one? Now, I get it. He made a few good desperation saves early on. He looked very ecstatic, very jittery in the first little parts of the game, which was kind of nerve-wracking to me, to be honest. And towards the end of the game, he made a few saves as well. But the Canucks ultimately lost because of a few things. Firstly, the PK. It sucks. It sucks again. That's kind of what I'm saying here. Their 5-on-5 five -five metrics are some of the best defensively in the NHL, but their PK is so bad that not only under Travis Green, but under Bruce Boudreau now, they are losing games because of it. And as well, the DiPietro performance on the third goal, the Tucker Pullman performance on the second goal, definitely not what you would expect out of a team that you want to see competing for a playoff spot. Tucker Pullman cannot be puck watching as much as the guy gosh darn does. Braden Shen has so much open time and space in front to get that pass from Tarasenko right there, back door by DiPietro in the post, and Tucker Pullman doesn't do anything about it until the last second. He gets there at the very end, but it's too little, too late, and Braden Shen has a nice open tap in to get it right by DiPietro there to make it 2-1. to one. The Canucks ultimately surrendered three straight goals here after getting the one nothing lead off of what was a very nice play by Matthew Highmore to draw two penalties at the same time. A roughing penalty by Barbashev and a roughing penalty for removing the helmet off of Tori Krug. The Canucks ultimately cannot convert on the power play, a full two-minute power play with three St. Louis Blues skaters on the ice, but they eventually get one to go immediately after. It's thrown to the goal, off a chase on. Eventually, it's Pearson on the side who buries it by Vili Huso. That's the only goal the Blues allow, though, and the Canucks, to their credit, they get a few shots here and there that actually look pretty good. It's just Huso has their number, and that's ultimately what they need. It's not Jordan Binnington here today, it's the other guy, because I guess Binnington happened to be nervous for this one, so he didn't suit up. But ultimately, I was kind of thinking about it in my head, watching this game, especially on that power play, that a lot of the mishaps, a lot of the mishandlings of the puck, a lot of the times where some of the guys who legitimately had good games, like I think Besser had a good game, he had a few really good opportunities towards the goal, I think Petey, for the most part, had a pretty okay game, we saw Thomas Trans talking in the intermission about the advanced analytics and Pedersen and all that stuff, I thought these guys had pretty alright games, it's just, when they made their mistakes, their mistakes were made at the worst times possible. Elias Pettersson bobbling the puck several times on the power play. One of the Johns, either Garrett or Shorthouse, made a quip about Elias Pettersson kind of like messing around with the length of his stick again, which is why he's messing up these passing plays. Brock Besser, same thing, losing the puck on the board battles and sending it to opposition instead of sending it to Quinn Hughes. Quinn was like the only guy, as he usually is, who was as consistent and as precise and as 
elegant as we want him to be when moving the puck on the power play or just in the offensive zone in general. It was really nice to see Quinn do his thing. It's just... I've been saying it the entire season, man. One guy cannot go out there and forcefully win a hockey game off of his own hand. And the Vancouver Canucks ultimately lose this one. And I'm kind of done. I kind of feel like stopping this video right now because I don't really know if I can go the full 10 minutes. Firstly, with the voice that I have right now, it kind of is a little bit rough and uncharacteristic of me, if you can tell. But I don't know. Maybe my mental state was just completely taken aback when DiPietro led in that third goal. And after that, I was like, okay, the Canucks are not going to win this game. Like, how many times have you seen it? The team goes out there, they outshoot the opponent like crazy, but the opposition goalie is making so many good saves. And the Vancouver guy is letting in weak goals either due to the goalie that they're playing or because of the defenseman in front of him. It was a rinse and repeat story, and that's kind of just all I have to say about it. You know, I'm going to end this video off now. I got to go take a rest. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can talk to me in the comments about anything you want regarding this game. It's kind of why I said at the beginning you can do my job for me, even though I think that's probably a very unprofessional thing for me to do. I get it. This is my job. This is my profession, technically. But, like, yeah, sometimes you just don't feel it right. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.